Hey, good morning all. Doing some thank you notes today. I'm starting with a 9 by 12 sheet of uh, terribly inexpensive paper. It's by Artist Loft. I purchased it in error. And uh, so I'm going to use it for thank you notes and little practice pieces. So I've got the 9 by 12 taped off into four rectangles so I can do four cards. And today I'm painting two cards at once. So I'm using the same sky for both. Combination Ultramarine and Payne's Grey. Now I didn't want to have a green sky so I put the red in um, halfway down so to blend the, um, the blues with the reds and then the reds with the yellows so you're having a pretty simple little transition there without having a green sky. I've tied my uh, paper towel into a rope here to create that crowd, uh, crowd cloud look and so far um, seems to have worked out. I didn't overdo it with the paints on the sky. This paper is, is not good. It just doesn't absorb so I left it alone and I think the sky actually worked out. But you'll notice here when I'm doing the foregrounds um, I started with a cadmium yellow and then mixed in some ultramarine and a bit as there I go grab some sap green to put that in and paint uh, it just kind of fades out and just kind of sits there on the paper and so just be advised that if you're what I've learned in the last year I'll just I've said it a couple of times you get good cotton paper and it really makes a difference when I started painting eons ago uh, I grew frustrated because I was always buying the cheapest quality stuff right I didn't think it mattered but then when I came back to painting this past year uh, I realized that it's uh, it's really worth the money to have good cotton paper and the heavier the better I found too I purchased some hot press paper which is um, really flimsy and it becomes very um, very hard to paint on because it buckles and even even after stretching it buckles and uh, so if there's any advice I can give, given what I've learned over the past year is to get some good, good heavyweight paper and the paints really respond well to them. As you can see here, I'm, I'm putting several layers on just to get a rich enough color on this paper. Again, it's only a thank you note, but I would like it to look, uh, you know, relatively good. So I painted over the whole right side there, put more cadmium yellow on it just to warm up the entire foreground. The left looks okay to me. Now what I'm doing is I'm uh, using my mop brush, my small little rosemary mop brush there. I just put some water on the horizon line and I'm creating um, some trees in the background. I don't know what I'm doing in either scene at this point. I know on the left I'm going to put a house and then on the right not sure. So I create a bit of a background. I just wet the area that I wanted to paint. And I put in some cadmium yellow and ultramarine and a bit of green. I know that it's supposed to be tree, so there is some green back there, but you wouldn't be able to see it from that distance. But just a hint of green and more blues and uh, washed out because it is in the distance. Now there's that little tool where it's, um, it's a thing for masking fluid. I never used the rubber part of it. I just uh, put the other end in the pencil sharpener to create a stick to... Um, you know, etch out some of the grasses and some of the trees. So as I mentioned, I'm painting a house on the left hand side. One of my tall, typical crooked structures. I like the bleakness of it, like the uh, the aloneness of it, having it out in the middle of nowhere. So a tall house, a couple of tall trees to uh, just to fit in the little picture there. Yeah, these thank you notes, I um, paint little thank you notes. I might put the, whoever purchased one of my paintings, I might put their initials in it somewhere in there. Uh, again, they're just little thank you notes to go along with uh, paintings I've sold, telling them that I appreciate their support. Now, I wanted this also to be bright and interesting. So I'm using a, a half inch flat brush to fill in the roof and I'm using some cadmium red in these small paintings, it's it's kind of cool to use a big brush. Just because a small painting doesn't mean you use a small brush. Um, the fewer brush strokes, the better that I've learned that painting with watercolor. If you can just lay on your paint in one stroke and then walk away from it, all is well. And if it's wet, then you can drop other colors into it. But in the case of the door and the roof, I was pleased with myself. 
I didn't do any other touch-up. Big brush, I just painted the area and uh, walked away. Now I used a big, a big quarter inch flat brush for the fence posts and the first load of paint was too heavy. Just dabbed it out real quick and then went back in, tried it again. I know that on the left, I will be inking it with my Rotring, the uh, tiny little uh, 0.25 pen. So I can save that painting. No matter what I do to it over here, I can always correct a lot of the issues um, with ink. And the good thing is, because the paper is so inexpensive, if I completely screw up both sides of this, uh, I just throw it away and move up to the other two. Okay, spoiler alert. Um, I painted the right-hand side. Seeing as I'm doing all these little details, I'll tell you a story. I painted the right-hand side. Uh, I tried a tree technique. It looked good to start. And then it went uh, terribly sideways on me. So I uh, actually modified the painting after I was done painting. And I'll show you the results of what I did. I believe when you look at my patron description, I tell you, I'll show you the failures. failures. Well, I'm going to show you a failure here on the right. But left-hand side, so far so good. Mop brush, a lot of yellow paint, and just dropping some green in. When doing these little thank you notes, it's not I don't uh, branch out and try anything too daring. Seeing as I had to get this note out in particular, I had to get it out today because I was mailing the thing out today. I, I, uh, I went with something I'm completely comfortable with. And so you recognize everything I'm doing on the left hand side. And if you're ever completely blocked, it's always fun to sit down and just do something that you like, that you're comfortable with not too stressful and um, I find myself going to these places when I'm painting them. It's just the serenity now. As I mentioned before the shadows kind of define these little houses too. They really help. You can almost get away without ink. The shadows really uh, again define the buildings. I was using a regular brush for the trees, a little spotter brush for little uh, little bits of blue on the shadow part. So here I am painting the sponge. Here's my adventure on the right hand side. I wasn't sure so I said I'm going to paint the sponge and here we go. I had mapped out what I want my tree to look like and at this point I probably should have just left it but no. Because the paint looked great when it went on and then it, uh, of course, blends into the background and I will have to go back to it. So while that was drying, I'm trying to keep my hand off it, I'm going over here with my Rotring India ink, super black ink, and doing super fine lines on this tiny little card. Love doing that. Oh, I wanted to mention too, thanks so much for everybody to, uh, who has responded to the survey. I had more than 50% of people respond, and of the 50%, it looks like three quarters of you guys uh, consider yourself beginners, which is great. So I just want to figure out, you know, how I navigate my content. I guess I consider myself uh, intermediate as I am still learning as I go. So um, when I'm, you know, when I'm putting stuff out, I'll keep everybody in mind. And hopefully those intermediate users out there will see a few things that they can use as well in their paintings. So there, I've signed the guy on the left up. Um, spoiler alert on that one too. I uh, put some more lines, some more ink and indicated boards on the right of the building after it was off the board. So here's where trouble began. First of all, because the paper is so crappy, I got that blotchy look and then I lost the nice shape of my tree as I put more, uh, I'm putting sap green on there and now I'm chasing it. And there I let it dry 
And I said, okay, I'll just see if the shadow color will help this thing. And uh, I gotta be honest, it made it worse. Doesn't, I didn't like the look of that. Started out okay, but that happens with paintings. So here I am now. The other thing is too, I came in with my rigger brush, uh, picked a combination of greens and browns and blues, give it a bit of a dark color. I, um, I wanted the trunk to be more wonky and I painted it far too straight for my liking. So, you know, at this point, not thrilled with it. So I thought maybe I could ground it out with some um, some ultramarine and some panes, indicate some shadow and some grasses under the tree. And then I thought I'd put even more shadow. And now I'm unhappy. So let's get a big brush out here and just take it all out. So there you have it. We'll just put a few splatters in at the front. Thanks for watching. Again, just a couple of quick, uh, quick little studies here. Uh, I'll show you what I did with the uh, one on the right. Still not sure if I'll keep it, but um, anyway, I did manage to make it a little bit better. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.